It is not enough to replace the frequency converter, it also needs to be set. And in this video, we will explain how to do that. Welcome to Watson Technical. Here, Watson engineers share their knowledge to make it easier for you to work with CNC machines. Subscribe and join our community. Let's get started. Converter adjustment is not required after buying a CNC router since this process is completed by the engineer in the factory before shipping. However, it is essential to know the stages of setting if it breaks down. We use frequency converters from the BEST company on Watson machines. Settings First thing to do is to press Escape button and gain access to all the menu points. We will cover the main ones. Function 1 to enter any of those points, you need to press Enter. Remember, in the function 1, we set the intensity of a current, measured in amperes. For that, take a look at what kind of spindle there is on your CNC router and write down a corresponding number. This information is noted on the spindle ID plate. To confirm the number, press Enter and Exit. Function 2. This is spindle voltage. There are two variants, 220 or 380. Again, you need to choose based on the model installed on your machine. Function 3. This is spindle frequency. Again, look at the ID plate and set the needed one. Function 21. This is the maximum frequency limitation. Usually, it equals the number in the previous discussed point. Next are going to be functions from 30 to 37. Watson machines have stage control over the rotation frequency. There are 8 speeds and each has its own point. We will place the chart with them and the required numbers on the screen. Function 56. This point is responsible for display indication and you need to have number 4 in here. It's suitable for Watson rotor. Function 57. It's the amount of rotation that a spindle has to make per some frequency union. Here, you need to calculate based on the spindle model. However, the majority of our machines will have a ratio of 60 rotation per one frequency unit. Function 58. This is a carrier frequency. For our spindles, it is set to 9000. However, this value can be adjusted. For instance, if the spindle is making a euro noise, you can decrease it to 8700. Or if it seems underperforming, you can increase it to 9300. Function 64. This point determines the source of frequency in the meaning of where the frequency value is going to be taken from. You have to have a number 3 here. That will make the system work by predetermined speeds. Function 65. That's the source of the working commands, where the signal has to reach to launch the process. You have to type in number 1. Function 67. The parameter is responsible for reverse control, meaning the spindle's counterclockwise rotation. You will need to refer to your converter menu because the value can be varied between models. However, in most of our machines, this should be set to zero. Special function 70. In our example, we have 40, 10 again. This number has to be set according to the manual. If you set everything but the working mode of your spindle remains the same, meaning it doesn't have to work as it has to, feel free to leave a comment and our engineers will help or contact us via email. Check out other videos on the topic in our playlist, CNC Rotor Guide. Don't forget to like and subscribe so you won't miss more tutorials. This is Watson Technical. See you next time.